RSV is an RNA virus that affects children and adults. It is usually seasonal and we see it during the winter season. It usually starts around mid-October until about mid-May and it peaks around end of January to early February. It usually causes respiratory type symptoms. The majority of patients will have upper respiratory type symptoms including cough and runny nose and then about 30% of patients will have lower respiratory tract symptoms including bronchiolitis and pneumonia. Yes, so this year has been different um, and that is because during the winter time we were deep in the middle of a COVID-19 pandemic and so everyone was masking and washing their hands and socially distancing and so RSV actually didn't have a chance to spread like it normally does. Um, we saw maybe one or two patients in the entire normal RSV season which is unheard of and since COVID numbers had decreased and the CDC had pulled back on some of their guidelines people were a little more lax and they were unmasking they were gathering socially they weren't washing their hands as much as they used to and so now RSV had a chance to spread so we're seeing an unseasonal um, rise in RSV now because of those very reasons So general RSV symptoms will include upper respiratory tract symptoms, cough, runny nose, increased work of breathing, and lower respiratory tract symptoms, faster breathing, difficulty breathing, and maybe even chest pain. RSV can also affect other areas outside of the respiratory tract, including the GI tract. Some patients present with just vomiting and diarrhea. Of course, fever all around. Um, and some patients may also present with red eyes or otitis media or middle ear infections. In premature babies, they may present differently from term babies with RSV. They may or may not have fever and generally they don't have respiratory symptoms. They will present with apnea, which is where they forget to breathe. They may present with irritability, decrease in activity or decrease in appetite. In children, RSV generally causes symptoms that does not require hospitalizations, but for children who have certain conditions, it can be life-threatening. Those children include premature babies, babies who were born small for gestational age, babies who are exposed to cigarette smoking at home, and babies who have congenital heart disease and other diseases such as asthma sickle cell disease. RSV is actually very common. The majority of patients less than 24 months of age will be exposed to RSV at some point in their life. There are some children who are more likely to get RSV. These include children who attend daycare, children who attend school, children who live in crowded areas, especially at home or in shelters, children who have other siblings who attend daycare, um, and children who are exposed to cigarette smoking. Other children are at significant risk of contracting RSV. That includes significantly premature babies who may or may not have congenital heart disease or congenital chronic lung disease, children who have asthma, children who have sickle cell disease or cystic fibrosis, and other children who have autoimmune disorders or congenital immune disorders are at significant risk as well. RSV spread very similar to coronavirus, which is why we didn't have our seasonal spike in the winter. It is spread mostly from contact, and so patients who contact or touch fomites, which could be handrails, doorknobs, the cart at the supermarket, um, and then touch their face and it's ino inoculated in their nostrils and in their mouth and then the virus replicates and then spreads cell by cell down into your lower respiratory tract. It is also spread from respiratory droplets which is not the main way it's spread but is a secondary type of spread. So patients who are within six feet of another person where a person is talking and respiratory droplets get into the air they can co contract RSV that way as well. 
protecting your child from RSV is very similar to protecting your child from coronavirus. Masking, socially distancing, washing your hands, and if you know that your child has been exposed, to quarantining them until they're better. RSV does have an incubation period of about three to eight days. And so the incubation period is where they have already been exposed to RSV, but they have not had symptoms just yet. They are infectious um, during this time, so we have to be careful. If we do know that there was an exposure to RSV, maybe think about if you're able to keep that patient home from daycare or school until we know for sure that that patient is RSV free. RSV is diagnosed from a simple nasal swab where we do a polymerase chain reaction or PCR test just similar to coronavirus. RSV is treated mainly with supportive care. If there's a fever, we treat that. If there's dehydration, we treat that. There is no medication on the market right now for RSV. Because it's a virus, antibiotics will not work. Some patients present initially with RSV and then get a secondary bacterial infection, and at that point in time, we may consider antibiotics. With regards to RSV treatment, we generally do not use nebulized albutrol for RSV treatment and it generally does not work in these patients. But if the patient is known to wheeze in the past or has a family history of asthma, we may try it. The clinical trials suggest that if it works, it works really well, but for the majority of patients, it will not work. We also do not use steroids as a mainstay of treatment for RSV. Similar to albuterol, it generally does not work for the majority of patients, but if they are sick enough to be hospitalized or have respiratory distress to the point of intubation, we may try steroids to help with the acute inflammation. 30% of patients who acquire RSV will have a lower respiratory tract infection, and of those patients, 3% will require hospitalization. In hospital, the mainstay of treatment is IV fluids, supplemental oxygen, and time for the lungs to heal. Some of those patients may develop significant pneumonia requiring intubation and development of acute respiratory failure. Those patients will require more intensive therapy including antibiotics and ventilator management. If you think your child has RSV, please take them to see their general pediatrician. They can have a nasal swab done in the clinic. It is a quick and pretty accurate test to diagnose RSV. If they do test positive, please try and keep your child at home for as long as they have symptoms. Symptoms generally last about three to eight days, and for that period of time, they're considered infectious. After the eighth day, if your child does not have any immunocompromised state, then generally viral shedding has decreased to the point where they're not infectious anymore.